across the globe and complete their study abroad dream. All right. So moving on, as you can see, these, this is the extensive list of our most prestigious partners across the globe. These are top 300, top 500 universities. But the limelight today is on State University of Plattsburgh. And we'll speak more about that university later on in the event. Yeah. So this, this is our track record. We have 40 plus academic partners across four continents, right? We have more than 400 programs that our students are studying right now, and we help them with those programs. We are engaged with more than 20,000 students. We've helped them go and achieve their study abroad dream, right? We have a huge arsenal of 500 plus experienced educators who help our students study, get those scores, upskill themselves, and you know be successful. As you can see, we have an awesome rating of 4.8 out of 5 from our students. That means they love us, right? And that is because we've helped them, right? Get it. So that speaks about a success rate. That is 98%. Moving on. We have on our panel today, Peter Rodenberg. He takes care of the international admissions at State University of New York, Plattsburgh. So over to you, Peter. Please Thank, you, Thank you, Thank uh, you. Could you could you make it so I could share my screen? Oh, never mind. You already did. You guys are on top of it. Can you see my screen here? Yes, Peter, now we can. Yeah. Over to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, there we go. So thank you again, um, Kasid and Pranav and the whole world grad team for having me. Uh, this is this is exciting. Um, a little bit about me. My name is Peter Rodenberg. As mentioned, uh, I'm the International Admissions Assistant at the State University of New York in Plattsburgh. Um, before I get into this, uh, I just wanted to touch base on something Kasid said just a minute ago. He mentioned personalized paths, and I'm really glad that he did use the word personalized, because that is something um, I highly recommend finding an institution and a group like this that will give you individual attention. At the end of the day, that is going to go, that, that's, that's just really important, and it's not, you're not going to get that everywhere. So I was very pleased to hear that in the introduction, because you're going to hear me say something similar for about the next 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, so without further ado, uh, here's my presentation overview. I'm just gonna run through this real quick because I wanna give you guys time to ask questions. I, I like to be very informal and really the questions are where it's at for me. Um, I'm very transparent and very straightforward, uh, maybe sometimes to a fault, <laughs> according to my wife. Um, but I think that it's the way to go. So I will shoot it straight. Uh, but we'll talk a little about Plattsburgh and some STEM opportunities, uh, experiential learning. That's a real big deal. And that's going to tie into personalized, as mentioned before. OK, uh, we'll talk about some admissions things and I might get to some things to think about, but I got need to go fast. So uh, we're in Plattsburgh, Plattsburgh, New York. There are 64, 64 state universities, New York, and we are one of them. I think we're the best one. Uh, we're located in northern New York. Uh, we're a small state city of 30,000, which is something I like. Um, I used to live and work in China, which is crazy with lots of people everywhere and lots of chaos. And I was very excited to come to a more relaxed, tranquil area. Um, and I'll get into that. Now, although it's a smaller place, we've got all the local amenities. I mean, we have airport, train station, hospital, places of worship. Um, we're about 15 minute walk from downtown where there's pubs and cafes and restaurants and shopping and all the fun stuff to do. Uh, we're about another 15 walk in the other direction to shopping malls and supermarkets and all that. But we also have a shuttle, a free shuttle for students to take them around. Um, so that's, that's important because you're gonna wanna go shopping. You're gonna have your arms full of a lot of things. You're gonna need to get a, a way back to campus. Uh, although we're a smaller area, we're a short drive from a lot of really big urban areas. And not only that, but very unique and, and distinct urban areas. Um, we're an hour from Montreal, Canada, which is in French Canada. So they all speak French up there. It, it's, it's like a European city. I was actually there two weeks ago. Um, really interesting, interesting place. Uh, Boston is about four hours away, four and a half. I'm sure everybody's heard of Boston. New York City is like five hours away. These are big um, 
what's the word? Uh, when you think of United States cities, you think of New York and Boston, right? You also think maybe of Chicago and LA, um, but these are new, these are Northeastern. These are the older cities of the United States. They're very different from places like Chicago, LA, or Dallas, or Miami. Uh, but really interesting, lots to do, and very easy to get to. We have buses that go there, we have trains that go there, and flights that go there. Um, but most people come to this area because of the environment. And there was a wonderful uh, quiz here uh, to start this morning where all three items, all three uh, questions or, or answers rather, were kind of outdoorsy things. And what's funny is that was a trick question because you can go sightseeing on a boat. <laughs> so you can kind of do all of those things at the same time. Um, I, I, I was asked, what would I choose? Uh, I, I would, I like to be outside. I like the calm environment and the clean, the blue sky, fresh air, all that stuff. I love, that's, that's me. Um, I would like to go on a boat. I really like to go fishing because of the, like the Zen, you know, like the, it's just, it's just really calm and feels good. But at the same time, um, I like to get out and see stuff. I've been all over the world. I love traveling. I love sightseeing. So. Uh, that's my quick answer to that. But you can do all of those things here in Plattsburgh and the surrounding area. It's absolutely beautiful here. I wish you could see outside my window, but um, there's the mountains up there and the lake over there, and it's it's really a beautiful place. And so this, this combination here of urban and rural, uh, lots of, of interesting food here. There's, there's a Greek restaurant, an Indian restaurant, um, Chinese restaurants, uh italian restaurants japanese i mean there's there's food from all over the world here um the the history here the northeast of the united states is a very it, it's the oldest part of the united states um so there's a lot of history here there's been a lot of wars here and a lot of uh you know interesting developments in american culture and and just the nation in of itself um, and again the environment so you combine those things with our student community. We've got about 5,000 students, over 300 international from over 60 countries. This is a very diverse place. And I'm from a small town in Missouri, which is in way off in the Midwest, not anywhere near here. And when people think of small town United States, they think of like where I'm from in Missouri. Up here, it's not that traditional sense of small town United States because of our geographic location our proximity to big cities, our proximity to French Canada. Some of the road signs in our city here are in French because we have so many French uh, tourists come down. Um, and again, the environment. So the, 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 the environment, the, the campus population and the proximity to these places make our area very diverse. And that's a, that's a neat and fun thing that should be celebrated. And we absolutely do. Um, we're quite proud of that. But let's get to academics here. Uh, we've got over 70 majors. And of course, the big one is computer science. It's like everybody, everybody, <laughs> I see more computer science applications in one day than any of the other ones. Um, and with that said, it's kind of an oversaturated market, if you ask me. Uh, try to double major in something. Consider a double majoring when you get into college. And I can talk about that another time. Um, it's very easy to do. It doesn't cost you any more money, and you get two degrees for the price of one. So talk to me about that later. Um, but some of our other majors, biology, robotics, is, a, is an up-and-coming one that is awesome. We are one of the only schools in the entire state of New York. And remember, New York City is in New York, okay? But we are one of the only schools. I think there are only two, but we are one of the two that have a robotics major. Now think about where the world is heading. Everybody's talking about computer science and AI. Hey, double major, skill of computer science with AI and robotics. And in five years, you're gonna be uh, looking pretty good. You're gonna be looking pretty good. Uh, environmental science is another big one. Think of where the environment's heading. Every country, every country is affected by climate change. I don't care where you are or who you are, okay? And in our environment, um, it's a great place to study that because it's beautiful out there and it's really important because a place like this relies on the tourism. That's a big part of the economy. It is in our interest to develop 
the, to, to, not to develop, but to maintain the environment, right? Um, that is a big one. And then of course, biomedical science. Uh, and there's other, there's caveats in there like med tech programs and, and things like that. So there's, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, those are just some of the more bigger ones. Um, oh, I, I should mention also business administration or the other business courses. Actually, our business college is probably our biggest uh, major. Like it's kind of our flagship. We're most our biggest thing. Um, but there are a number of business majors: accounting, finance, marketing, global supply chain management, all kinds of things. Most business students double major because so many courses overlap. It's really easy to do. Um, my student worker here, Adib, he has three majors. <laughs> He has three majors and a minor, okay? So think that that's that's quite important. Um, here, again, I'm gonna touch base on that personalized paths. That That is so important. And here you are more than a face in the crowd. If you go to a really big university, you're a name and a number in a book. That's what you are, okay? And I can say that from experience. I, I said a minute ago, I used to work in China. I was a teacher at a university in China. You wouldn't believe the number of students I had in each class. Well, you would believe if, if you're in India, I'm sure your classes are similar in high school, right? Or college. Well, I, there's no way I could know my students' names. No way. It's impossible. There are too many students. Here, our student to faculty ratio is 16 to 1. Our average class sizes are around 20 to 22 students. That means your professors are going to know who you are, know your face, know your name, know where you're from know what you're good at, and the most important, they'll know what you're not good at. They can cater instruction to you as an individual, personalized, right? That is incredibly important. You will get one-on-one -on -one attention. And I think my colleagues at the World Grad here will agree with me when I say, it's not what you know that's important, it's who you know that's important. And developing networks and mentorship is the name of the game. That's why you're going to university, is for mentorship and networking, okay? At a university like ours, you will work side by side with your professor for four years. They, they will become your mentor, okay? And when you graduate, you're gonna need an internship. How do you find internships? Your professors that you've just spent four years working with. After your internship, now you're gonna get a job. Well, who are your references on your resume? Oh, your professors that you just worked with for four years that know everything about you. That is the real gem of, of, of a university like ours, is building that network. Again, I can speak from experience. I went to university in a college in Missouri that was almost exactly like this one. My references, my reference sheet on my resume the first person is my professor from 20 years ago when I was a student because I built the relationship and I maintained it all this time. Every year, we still contact each other. You will The same thing will happen to you. You will build a network and it's going to start with your people here at WorldGrad. And then it's going to start with me because they are working with me. And then it's going to develop to the whole campus. And after four years, that is the most important thing you will walk away with. I promise. Uh, again, we focus on experiential learning, getting your hands dirty, okay? You go to the classroom, you look at the, you read all the things, you listen to the lectures, you do all the stuff, and then you go practice it. If you're like me, I, I cannot read something and understand it. I have to actually do it, fail, do it again, fail again, and then do it again, and again, and again, and again, and finally, I'll get it. Okay, I'm a guitar player. I've been playing for 20 years, over 20 years. I still, <laughs> if I'm trying to learn something new, I, I, I have to do it, fail, do it, fail, and just keep going, right? And practice is the name of the game. Well, that's what this is. That's what experiential learning is. We put a huge focus on this. There's a number of ways to do it, um, a number of, of aspects here, but research, internships, study abroad, you could come here and study abroad from here for a semester, for a year. We have a student just went to Hawaii. We had a student go to Oregon, went to Texas, uh, went to Spain. Um, there's a number of opportunities here. 
Um, what this all does, again, it bridges the gap from theory and practice. It gives you practical application and working with your mentor. Okay, again, personalized. Uh, we can talk admissions here. Uh, this is this is general for, for students who are not going through the World Grad Program, but a lot of this is applicable, okay? Um, the total cost of attendance for one year, like my estimate here is about 39,000, okay? Um, that'd be after scholarships, okay? Um, students get, oops, sorry. Stu sorry, that would not be after scholarship. That's your I-20 cost, round 39. That's your I-20 cost. That's different from what you're actually gonna pay. Um, but your the scholarships here over on the side, that's what, stu of course, students and parents are always wanting to know about that. Um, so the least we can give you is 10,000. The first two that you see there, global diversity and campus community, that 10,000 is for all international students staying on campus, okay? If you have a pulse <laughs> and are an international student, we will give you 10,000, okay? There's an additional 3,500, but that, that's different. That's for first year students. That's not what would go through the world grad book, okay? But the 10,000 indeed would. That's renewable each year. That's also, so take that 10,000 and add it to the 39 you see there. So you're talking about 29,000 is about what you're actually gonna pay. That's real cost for one year, everything, tuition, Fees, housing, food, health insurance. That's all of it, okay? That is a great price in the Northeast of the United States, especially when you consider you're gonna be working side by side and getting personal individual attention. That is a wonderful thing. And your parents right now are all going, wow, okay? Um, I can talk more about that later too if you, if you have questions. So a couple of things to think about. World grad has a number of, of areas. We, we saw that before. Um, there's a, there are so many schools and it's really an overwhelming process to be where you are, whether you're a student or, a, or a, a parent. But the good news is you're working with world grad and you're working with me, okay? It's our job to help you navigate all of this, <laughs> okay? And, and if I may be frank, we're, we're two pretty good institutions, if you ask me. I, I think, I think you, you, have, uh, you have good support here. And again, you're going to get individual attention. So you can relax a little bit. I know it looks overwhelming, but you're, you're in the right place. Some things to ask yourself when you're looking at all these schools. Is it a public or private? Are you looking two-year, four-year community college, all that? Uh, is there a certain state or city that you're looking to be in? Do you have family somewhere, friends somewhere? Do you like this type of environment? Uh, what is it? What's the political situation? Um, what major are you considering? Some schools don't have certain majors. Uh, is it a good financial option for you? I mean, that's, you know, be honest with yourself. Is can, can you guys afford this? But also, what's the cost of living in that area? Okay, $20 in Plattsburgh goes a very long way. $20 in New York City is nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. And that's the same all over the world. In the major cities, it costs more to live there. Okay? What's great about us is we're a smaller place. It's easy to live here. It's, it's cheaper to live here. But when you want to do your <clears throat> sightseeing, it's very easy to do. You can get to Boston. You can get to New York. You can go to Montreal. You can hike in the mountains. You can go into the forests. You can take a boat on the river, on the lake or on the river. All of those things are easy to do from here, and it's not very expensive. And finally, the thing that you, I'm, I'm serious, I'm, I'm going to mention it again, student to faculty ratio, find a place where you get individual attention. Uh, it is the most important thing. That's why I've mentioned it as many times as I have. Also, sports and activities, you know, um, what is there to do? A lot of campuses have these types of things. Uh, sports and clubs and all that stuff. One of my student workers, um, his name is Tanay. He was the president of the cricket club. We have a cricket club. Okay. <laughs> the kids, they play right out there all the time. Um, it, it, it's a lot of stuff to do. A lot of interesting things. You guys should be really excited. And I'm proud of you for just considering studying abroad. I think everybody should do that. 
Um, one other thing I want to add before I'll, I'll pass it back to Kassid here is um, every university you're going to apply to, you're going to talk to someone like me, okay? Make sure you reach out to them and you ask them questions. Get your questions answered. Someone like me should be transparent and be forward. I, I firmly believe that. Um, I'm going to tell you the pros and the cons. I'll be honest with you. But reach out. Get your questions answered. And make sure the person like me answers you in a timely manner. It's very indicative of the, of the institution that you're going to. Okay. In addition, one last thing. Reach out to current students. Ask students who are currently attending the university, what's it like? What are the professors like? Which is the best dormitory? Which dormitory is haunted? Um, where do you go on a date on a Friday night? What's the best restaurant to go to? What's the best dining hall? Uh, there are so many questions that I, I can't answer. Your, your team at World Grad can't answer. We're not students here but we know who the students are and we can connect you with them. And on that note too, reach out to me and say, hey, Peter, I'm interested in computer science. Could you get me in touch with a computer science professor? I have a question about uh, you know, what courses I'll take and how I can better prepare for them. <laughs> of course I can do that because we will give you personalized attention, okay? Those are the key things. Uh, Here's my info. Uh, I, we can give it to you again later, too. And you have the World Grad info. Reach out to us. It is our job to successfully navigate you through this process. Okay? Your success means our success. It's mutual. Okay? The three of us are in a team here. So feel free to reach out to either of us. Ask away. Ask away. Please. I love answering your questions and giving you the peace of mind you need to make the right decision for you, okay? Uh, with that, I think Kasim's gonna talk a bit more about the partnership and then we're gonna open up to Q&A, okay? And let me get out of my screen here. There we go. Take it away. Perfect, thank you so much, Peter. That was so refreshing. I am very excited after listening to you and I really feel like I was 17 again and I could, you know, <laughs> plan my study abroad and come to State University of New York, Plattsburgh. Right. So thank you for that refreshing session, Peter. Uh, I would really like to share my screen and speak more about our partnership and we'll see what we do for our students and how do we operate. Right. So just a sec. I'll share my screen with you guys. There you go. You'll see Peter once again. So there's a video, we have a video, right? And I'll play that video for you guys. The World Grad brings you the smartest way to an American bachelor's degree, the All-American Undergraduate Program. The program helps students accelerate their career, gain academic skills needed to succeed in the US, increase their chances of visa approval, save a significant amount of money, with this program, students can guarantee their admission to a popular U.S. university by completing the first year of their bachelor degree from home before moving to the U.S. for years two, three, and four. The All-American Undergraduate Program is a smart program that helps students break financial barriers in studying overseas and succeed academically through flexible and adaptive study routes. The credits for this program are offered by Tiffin University and Mount St. Mary's University in Los Angeles. Here's how it works. Choose from a wide range of degrees offered by our partner universities and apply through the World Grad with the required documents. Your application will be reviewed by the World Grad and assessed as per the university standards. If accepted, you will receive an offer from the All-American Undergraduate Program, along with a conditional letter from the university. All-American Undergraduate Program has six intakes per year, giving you the flexibility to start your degree anytime. Thanks to our accelerated program and award-winning team of educators, 
you can successfully complete your first year in less than a year. After which, our expert student support team will help you complete all of the progression and travel requirements to help you seamlessly progress to the U.S. University campus and complete the rest of your degree. Graduate with your bachelor's degree and become eligible for three years of OPT in the U.S. to launch your dream career. Studying with... All right, guys, that was awesome, I believe, right? You can complete first year of your undergrad degree in just under 10 months, guys. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting, guys? Yeah, it is, right? So let me speak more about the World Grad and the All-American program, right? I'll just skip the video. The World Grad. And, yeah, there you go. Right. So what do we do and how is it possible that we are helping you guys, you know, complete your first year within 10 months? We are helping you guys save your money, right? How is it happening, right? What is it that makes us unique? What is it that makes you our best friend and us your best friend, right? So these are the things that we do. You can save up to 40 to 50 lakh rupees on your total degree cost, guys, right? This includes your room and board, your living ex uh, expenses, your health insurance, etc. Like Peter said, right? You would have lower tuition fees when you start with us with the World Grad, right? And you can expect scholarships for the rest of your time in the university, right? You can earn skills. You can succeed overseas. Does upskilling take one or two months? No, it takes time. You'll take time to build those skills and we'll help you with that, right? We'll help you gain those skills. You can save your time, right? By joining us in any intake we offer six intakes like michael said in the previous video right guys so this is what we offer now if you see at this or look at this table you can save approximately 20 to 25 30 lakh rupees when you start with the world grad isn't that great guys i hope you are as excited as we are and if not please speak to our counselors they'll they'll give you more insights and after listening to Peter, I am really sure that I want to go to State University of New York, Plattsburgh, right? So I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll open the house for you guys. I'll open the Q&A for you. Then thanks, Ka thanks, Kasid. So I think I'll just uh, just quick to quickly add uh, to what Peter and Kasid have already said. Kasid, let's open it up for Q&A. But uh, to all the students and parents who joined us firstly, thank you so much and a warm welcome. I know it's 8 p.m. on a Friday evening, so... Uh, I'm sure we are what's holding you off to a good, uh, fun Friday evening. Uh, but but I hope you all uh, enjoyed the presentation. Uh, Peter, thank you so much for presenting. Uh, as Kasi said, I wish I had a time machine. Uh, could be seventeen again and uh, and uh, and try and make this decision. Um, and, and uh, you know, uh, this is I think a great opportunity for all the students and parents to ask their questions. One, of course. Uh, if you have questions about the world grad program, which Kasid has explained, we'll be happy to answer that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've got Peter here who can answer all of your broader questions about, uh, you know, US, about OPT, stuff like that. Or if you have questions, uh, as you said, more nuanced about where will I eat uh, or will I get to work part time <laughs> or uh, is, is, are there Indian restaurants on campus? Uh, please feel free to ask them. This is a great opportunity. Um, so yeah, with that, we'll open it up for Q and A. Uh, I think I see a question on why Plattsburgh only. Yeah, good question. Uh, so we are, of course, uh, you are uh, not restricted only to um, SUNY Plattsburgh. Uh, we can help you work through various university options. However, uh, the session today we are focused on on SUNY Plattsburgh. It is one of the more prestigious uh, and honestly after this presentation more exciting opportunities uh, and university options um uh, peter there's a question on academic requirements i think that we're going to see a few of those uh, in terms of uh, academic requirements for undergrads too and maybe do you want to uh, talk about that for a bit yeah so um the, the most important thing of course are your high school scores um, so I, I guess most of the Indian transcripts I see are CBSE transcripts. So we would look at your standard 10 and 12. 
Um, for, for other like, you know, IGCSEs or uh, IB or, or whatever, uh, we would look at all of your high school, grades nine through 10, or sorry, nine through 12. Um, you'll need to show proof of English proficiency, but uh, through this world grad program, um, during your first year through Tiffin or Mount St. Mary's, uh, you would take an English course. And that English course, uh, as assuming you get a C in that course, which shouldn't be too tough for English speakers, um, it will provide you the proof of English proficiency that you need. So that means you don't need IELTS or TOEFL or, or SAT or, or Duolingo or any of those things. That English course, your first year at Tiffin, will carry over. Um, we are SAT optional, so you don't have to submit SAT scores. Uh, some students do. They use it as proof of English proficiency, um, but it, it's it's not needed. Uh, so the academic requirements, um, where's my, here it is. Um, the least, so let's say you're taking CBSE. The, the least, like an, a 57 average, 57% in your academic courses. That's like the least, okay? Um, any lower than that, and I'm really gonna look very closely and, and, and probably not accept you. <laughs> but um, that's that's the least. So it, it's attainable. It, it's not something you know out, out of control here. Um, the only kind of strange things would be like, if you wanna study computer science, I need to make sure you have taken math. Okay, if you want to study biology, or well, I need to make sure you have some sciences in high school. So, so some students, you know, they want to study biomedical science, but they were on like a social science pathway. They took history and geography. Eh, I, I, I don't like that. I'm gonna we're gonna have to work with you and kind of kind of make a workaround. <laughs> so you know, you'll we'll, we'll start you in a different program and then you'll change your major later. Okay, there, there's a number of things to do. Nothing is 100% black and white, and we can make a lot of movements. Um, again, that's why I'm here to help you through the process. Um, any yeah. other academic so, things? Oh, I'll, just add to, I'll just add to what Peter said, I think, and yeah. I'll answer a couple of questions as well. So as Peter said, minimum of, uh, so we look at for to starting the program, we would look at a minimum of 60%. Uh, it's okay if you're from a state board or a central board. That's fine. I don't think we are differentiating there. Uh, right. So I hope that answers the other question. I saw a question around the requirement of IELTS. Uh, so I just repeat what Peter said. Uh, typically, yes, you would need an English proficiency exam like the IELTS. The good part is, since with this world grad program, you're completing one year at home before you progress. As part of that one year, you will do a English course. Right. So as whilst you are completing that program, your English proficiency gets uh, gets shown automatically. So you don't actually have to take a separate IELTS test. So that's a, that's an advantage. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, I so I hope, hopefully that answers the questions on uh, on the entry requirements. Uh, I'm just looking at some of the other questions uh, here. Uh, Peter, there's one around part-time job opportunities on campus. Maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, oh, definitely. I, I love talking about that. I have five student workers myself that report to me. Um, and that they're a big part of our admissions team. Like I said before, wherever you go, make sure you reach out to current students. And I firmly believe that. And I tell my students to be honest. They will tell you which dormitory they prefer and which they dislike. You know, they will tell you what food they dislike. I, I want them to be honest and give it all up front. Um, but that's just an example of some part-time jobs. We have part-time jobs all over campus, everything from like food service to tutoring, um, admissions like here in my team, um, library workers. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of things. So there's a number of jobs. Um, now, these jobs, they're, they're not going to pay for your tuitions or things like that. But it is going to give you a good amount of pocket money to enjoy yourself here. I mean, that's a big deal. You, you're, you're studying abroad, as I said, for mentorship, networking, and experience. Experience is a big, it's a big part. And that's academic as well as social. 
I mean, you, you're going to learn so much about yourself going to another country and, and navigating a different academic system, a different culture, all of those things. Um, and working in, in, the, in the system is a great way to be acclimated. It's a great way to make some money, of course. It's a great way to get job experience, real job experience, uh, and to make friends and things. Um, you know, your your colleagues kind of become your friends over time. I'm sure my I'm sure my colleagues at WorldGrad can say that too. Um, you know, you you go out after work and you you know, or you go see a movie or something like that. It's it, it happens. Um, so how you would get these jobs is you we have a we have a database called Handshake, and when you start. Once you're accepted to the university and you, you know, you pay your admissions deposit and you're actually one of us, you have access to a number of, of uh, opportunities here. One of which is this database, Handshake, where you can go on. There's all kinds of listings for jobs. I mean, all kinds, all jobs around campus. And you apply, you know, you apply for a job, you'll have an interview, you'll do all the things that the <laughs> Pranav and Kassid and Sarav and all of us had to do to get our jobs, right? So um, it's great practice for you. We also have a career development center here on our campus that is free for you to use. So I don't know if you've ever made an American resume before, probably not. Um, my advice would be to contact them when you first get here. Contact Career Development Center and say, hey, you know, uh, I'm a 17, 18 year old uh, international student. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking for a part-time job. Could you help me develop this resume? You know, um, they'll also give you tips on interviewing. If you've never had an interview before, it's a little intimidating at first, <laughs> you know? Um, so it, there's a lot of resources here to help you. Um, we'll show you where to go. We'll show you what to do. But you, as the individual, need to do it, right? We can give you the opportunity. You have to take it. Perfect. Thanks for that, uh, Peter. I yeah. again just browsing through the questions. I think there's a just related on that theme. Yeah, there are yeah. a couple of questions around, uh, stressingly about graduation rates and job support. I think you spoke about the job support a little bit in terms of, you know, there is a career center that will help you with uh, uh, resume building. I'm assuming with interview skills, etc. But maybe don't yeah. talk about the post completion of the degree graduation rates and any stats. Uh, yeah. I think students here love data and stats around uh, yeah, they do. jobs, you know, salaries <laughs> and graduation <laughs> rates and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, you can check yeah, out. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, graduate graduation rate. I, I honestly don't even know that. That's kind of a. I always find that question odd. Um, just because of, just because the university has a has a certain graduation rate, it, it's you, 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 you are the student. <laughs> you. I don't know how you are as a student. I don't know how well you study. I don't know how serious you take your classes. I don't know if you're sleeping in and missing classes. I don't know. So I, I can't give you I can't give you a, any guarantee that your you as a student are are going to be successful. That's that's kind of you. We will provide you with all the opportunity. It's up to you to take it. No one's going to hold your hand. Okay, um, that's important to to say. I think. Um, however assistance is is crucial that's why you're coming here that personal attention and and building those relationships and nurturing them that is the most important thing you can do when it comes to, when you're thinking about your postgraduate uh, plans whether that's an internship whether that's graduate school or whether that's going into the workforce these are going to be the people to help guide you to where it is is a good fit for you they're going to be your references on resumes they're they're going to they're going to be your support group um so I, we have interns all over the world all over the country all over everywhere i mean for big big companies like deloitte or ibm or apple uh or nike or lamborghini uh or small companies like the dentist office just down the street or you know and everywhere in between. Okay, so how do they find, how do they get those jobs? Like by going to a university, nothing, those jobs are not guaranteed to you, but there are all of these things here.
for you to take to help find those things and help get those things. Not just find them, but to get them, okay? Um, but it's up to you to do the work. I hope all that makes sense. Um, my best advice there is, is in American universities, you need to talk. Even a computer science student needs to interact a little bit, okay? So in our, you know, you need to raise your hand, ask some questions, answer some questions, interact with your professors and the people around you, and that will open doors for whatever your next step may be, okay? Perfect. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Peter. And I'll just add to what Peter said. One of the things, you know, one of the cultural differences that students from India versus students in the in the West, uh, the difference is that there is a general shyness for students from here. Yeah, it's nothing wrong. It's just how you know how our schooling system works. Yeah, and the advice that we give to students every time is please ask. That is literally the one piece of advice, and that if you oh. have a question, ask. Right, and there is Thank a you. hesitancy to not. Um. Uh, so to Peter's question around, you know, how will I get jobs or part-time work, et cetera, that's all once you get to campus. Yep. If you ask people, you will get all those answers. Um, there are I, I want to add right. to that just, please, just of real fast. Let of me course, add please, to that. Because, please, please. Like I said, I was, I was a professor in China, a, a Far Eastern culture, completely different from mine, okay? The students sit in the classroom like this. Yeah. Nobody moves. I, sometimes I wouldn't even know if they're breathing. You know, I'm like, hello. And if they, they don't move. They don't speak. They don't ask. They sit and listen. Or they play on their phone, which that drives me crazy. But <laughs> um, my point being is that is that is a 180 degree difference from you from from classroom culture in the United States. What Pranav said is absolutely true. It It's it's a different animal you're gonna need to interact and i don't mean ask answer every question all day long i mean you know no but but my tip to you students answer a question early in the lecture because those are usually the easier questions and if you answer that question the professor knows and remembers you he knows you asked and in my culture that means you're paying attention and you're interacting, and that is going to mean more to the professor than your test scores. And things like that, things like that, if you have a 79 at the, at the end of the semester, but you've been participating and you've been interacting, I, I, I'm telling you, your 79 magically turned into an 81. I'm telling your C became a B because you were interacting in class and you were you were part of the conversation and that tells the professor you're interested and you're paying attention. So Pranav, absolutely, freaking lutely. I'm so glad to hear you say that. Oh, and I think uh, that I also want to add that one of the one of the uh, key reasons for this this partnership is that uh, you know we a lot of times students come and ask and in fact there are a couple of questions in the chat box saying can I go. Uh, on campus in the first year itself. Of course you can. But one of the reasons we have this program in place is because doing those 30 credits at home allows students to acclimatize. To what Peter said, we are also culturally different. Also the academic systems are very different. There is a lot more critical thinking and there's a lot more writing that's involved uh, in, the, in the US, typical US curriculum that our schools are not great uh, at you know, inculcating. And so what this does is it allows you to get acclimatized to that new setup whilst you're still at home. So you don't have to yeah. worry about where to eat or where do I stay. Yeah. Right. Uh, all right. Uh, there were a couple of questions. Uh, Peter, if you're okay, I'll just take the next couple of questions. There were one around yeah. timing and the cost. Uh, so I'll just try and answer all of them. Hopefully my screen is, is visible. Um, so there was a question around, uh, I thought, the, so the student interestingly said, I thought New York was very expensive. Uh, so is this number right? It is. Uh, and I'll repeat what, what Peter said. Yes, while you know, you're thinking about the state of New York, but if you are in New York City versus if you are in a, in a relatively smaller place like Plattsburgh, it is very, very different, right? Very, very With different. With $20, you can probably have uh, you know, a single half decent meal in New York City, but 
you can probably have a to Peter's point a nice <laughs> nice date on a Friday evening with those twenty twenty five dollars, right? Uh, so so yes, uh, it is. Uh, we this figure you spoke about are correct. Uh, again, just to put it in perspective, uh, because of the nature of you know the partnership and the program that you will be studying as students, you will be studying the first year at home, which means that you save on living expenses for one full year, right? As well as have a slightly lower tuition fee, and then for years two, three, and four, uh, you have a very attractive scholarship that we just spoke about. Uh, if you're doing well, you can start. Um, you know, there are probably additional academic scholarships, but. Plattsburgh, a relatively smaller pace, uh, place, living is relatively cheap, much cheaper compared to New York City. Uh, your total cost for your four years is going to be about 65 to 70 lakh rupees. Uh, Peter, for your context, that's about, you know, that's about eighty five ninety thousand dollars um, uh, Again, I won't get into the details. Please do speak to your world grad counselor. They'll be able to break this down for you in terms of year one, year two, year three, year four, uh, you know, what is room and board was, et cetera. But, you know, if your parents ask, all right, what's it going to cost me? That's the number you can tell them that it's going to cost me a total of about 65 lakh rupees. Uh, and the second question I'll quickly answer is on timelines. Very, very tactically. Since we are sitting uh, in December, uh, I'm assuming all of the students here are now aiming to travel to the U.S. in September 2024. Uh, it's called, typically it's called the fall semester of 20, in 2024. So what you will do is you will start working with your world grad counselor right now, right? And I always say sooner the better. Whenever someone asks me what's the last date, I always say sooner the better. Uh, so start working with your counselor today to start sharing your documents. They'll assess your first year so there was a couple of questions around when does the first year start it starts on the 15th of january that's the next intake if you're able to start in january over the next eight months you will be able to complete up to 24 credits which will be equivalent to your first year in parallel you will start working on your i20 process which is where you collect your financial documents etc and you will start interacting a lot with peter at that stage uh, when your documents you know start getting submitted you will get your I-20, you will get your uh, visa process, all of that going, and you will be set to reach campus in August 2024. So very broadly, those are the timelines. If the dates, if there are two dates you need to remember, it's 15th of Jan 24, that's when your first year starts. And then August 26th, that's when you will reach campus. Uh, so I, I'll stop with that. And I just wanted to answer those two tactical questions. Uh, Peter, there's a question here. I'm just coming back to the chat box, but I'd seen a quest couple of questions on housing options. Uh, that's something you could uh, touch upon. Yeah. Um, well, so all of our students, the first year, and I understand you'll be doing this program. So your first year is actually your second year. <laughs> but yes. um, most students, their first couple of years live on campus. Um, we we want you to do that. We insist that you do that because um, we want to make sure you're provided for. We want to make sure you're acclimated and you're comfortable. Culture shock is a real thing. Um, everybody gets it. Everybody gets through it at some degree. Um, and that first year, we just want to make sure that you're you're okay. We know that your parents are concerned and you're concerned and you're in a new place and you know, so students live on campus. Now, some dormitories they prefer, some they don't. They're all remodeled, um, so they all are, are quite new and quite nice. Um, there's a kitchen on every floor, a shared kitchen, so you can cook your own things if you want. Um, some students choose dormitories that are close to the dining hall so they can wake up and get food really quickly. Other students prefer to live closer to their classroom. They like to sleep until 8.55 and then get to their nine o'clock class. So that's a student preference. Um, one thing that will happen is when, you, when you're going through the process of getting here, you've been accepted and all that, you're gonna have to send some documents like, like medical, pet, you know, like uh, health forms and things like that. One of those other forms is your housing form. So you'll need to, to, fit, to complete a housing assignment and, or a questionnaire. And this questionnaire will ask you preferences like, do you sleep late? 
Or do you, you know, do you go to bed early? Do you study in the morning or at night? Do you listen to music when you study? What, uh, like all kinds of, of questions about you personally. So they try to match you with someone that they feel you'd be compatible with, okay? Um, so that's, and, and if you have a preference, like, oh, I want to live in Wilson Hall because I have a friend who lives in Wilson Hall. Okay, sure. You can put all those kinds of things. And then housing will determine wherever you go, the housing department. Maybe by chance there's one you don't care for. I don't know. Maybe you stay here for a semester and you think, oh my gosh, my, my roommate is a disaster. You've got to get me out of here. Okay, no problem. It, sometimes that happens, but most of the time that roommate becomes your best friend for about four yep. years. I mean, it, it's true. I'm not just yep. saying that. Um, so that's a neat thing. Um, I, I actually didn't stay in the dormitory when I was an undergrad student because I went to college in my hometown and I could get my parents cooking and I could do laundry and have a free place to sleep. So I didn't do that. Um, and I, I regret it. I honestly do. I, I really wish I had that dormitory experience for a year. Um, but I didn't anyway. Uh, and one of our dormitories is haunted. So you might want to do a little research on which one is haunted if that sort of thing scares you. I think I noted that as a as a question to ask. I think that's the first time I've heard that prompt wow. in terms of which dorms are haunted. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you which one. one. I'm not going to tell you which one. I think we'll wait for uh, some of our students to find out. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was going to say, <laughs> contact current students and they will tell you immediately. And they'll tell you stories about it. Oh my God, so and so said that so and so saw something. You know, it's all it's all hearsay, but it's funny. Uh, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So speaking uh, of and I just want to and haunted. Sorry, Pranav. Uh, Go ahead. I also have a question that you know asks about you know student security and safety in the campus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know what we can do about ghosts. Um, that's kind of out of our hands, but um, we have a we have a couple of, of safety things that are a little unique for here. I think. Um, of course, there's a campus police, and of course, there's a city police, and that's everywhere. But um, we also have a, a, a like a team of, of students, like criminal justice students, right? There's they're training to become police and law enforcement and and lawyers and all that kind of stuff. But if you're somewhere on campus, like let's say you're in the library and it's maybe eleven o'clock at night and you've been studying for five hours and you're just dead to the world and you just want to go home but it's dark and you just don't feel comfortable walking across campus by yourself. We just have an app. You just, you send a message and we have a team of two. It's a male and a female for, for all, all cases, but a male and a female will come and they'll, they'll assist you. They'll walk you to your dormitory. Right. And that's a really neat kind of thing. I mean, yeah. it's not that you need it. You don't need it. Honestly, you don't need it, but it makes students more comfortable and we need you to be comfortable. Because if you're comfortable, you're happy and successful. And if you're happy and successful, we are happy and success bleh, successful. And WorldGrad is happy and successful. And your parents are happy and successful. It is our best interest to keep you safe and happy, right? Um, in addition, we have these things like uh, they're all over campus, but they're called like a they're called blue light phones. And if if you're ever you know. In a in a bad situation, you can hit you can hit this button, and it sounds all the alarms, and you know it, it, the police will know. Oh, okay, so the blue light number four got hit. So boom, they send somebody there immediately, and and that sort of stuff too. So there's a lot of neat things on the campus. Now, unfortunately, the United States gets a lot of bad press about crime and things like that. Um, it's a hot topic. It, it it sells articles and people tune in. I get it. Now, is it is there truth to it? Some. There are places in the United States you do not want to go. Almost every major city has somewhere you don't want to go. Okay, but you as students uh, have no reason to go there. <laughs> There's no reason. Any, any tourist area that you go to, those are going to be incredibly safe, okay? Tourist areas are very safe because that's where the cities are generating money. Uh, but in the big cities, there are places you don't want to go. And that's where some crime is, you know? I mean, there's crime, there's crime in every big city in the world. So don't think that it's all only here in the United States. 
But again, we're a smaller city of about 30,000 people. Everybody knows everybody here. You know, and the, and the campus, everybody knows you're going to walk down the down the hallway and see your professor. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. You know, and it's, it's a very family close group. So people watch out for each other. And, and I, I think that helps people, feel, students especially, feel at ease and feel safe. So if you were going to L.A. or New York City or or. Lubbock, Texas, or Alabama, or something like that, uh, yeah, you might be a little more concerned about safety. But if you're going to Plattsburgh, New York, or, or a school in the Northeast in a smaller city, uh, you're, you'll be okay. Don't, it, it, it's not, not too much to think about. Um, people always are afraid about guns. I hear guns all the time, especially for my old Chinese students. I can honestly say, I've seen more people be hit by cars in China than I have get shot in the United States. <laughs> That's very frank, I know, but I'm just, I'm telling you, I don't, it, it's not a thing here. It's not a thing. So, but I know people are really worried about it because they turn on the news. Um, my, where I live, the big, the big city close to my hometown that's not a very safe place. You, you don't want to you don't want to go to certain parts of that city. But here in Plattsburgh, no work, no work. Got it. Uh, I think uh, yeah, and no, I think safety definitely is a, and you know I think it's a question that parents ask us often. So um, yeah, uh, thanks for that, Peter. Uh, yeah, I mean I, again, I'll say one other thing. I don't I don't lock my doors. <laughs> yeah. In my, my house is probably unlocked right now. And my wife doesn't like that. My wife, my wife is from Nepal. Uh, so we have a lot of interesting cultural differences that happen every day. One of them is sometimes I forget to lock the door. But again, I'm from a small town in Missouri. We never locked our door. And yeah. I, I still don't lock my door. I mean it, And it, I it, I know that will that is a that is a concept that will be very alien to uh, yeah. to a lot of people over here. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. A related question, uh, and I think we're nearing our time also, so I'll, I'll try and wrap it up. But uh, a lot of Indian students on campus, or or how many uh, do you have a lot of Indian students on campus? Yeah, of course, of course. I mean that that again, that's kind of a funny question too, because Indian students are everywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, we do we do have a number of Indian students. Um, I was just in Mumbai. Uh, must have been when was that? Like. Six weeks ago, I was in Mumbai. Before that, I was in Dubai and Muscat, Oman. There are just as many Indian students in Muscat and Dubai than there are in Mumbai. It's crazy. Um, and so we have a lot of Indian students here, but they're from a lot of parts of the world. We have an Indian student from Jamaica who's here right now. Oh, I mean, okay. yeah. So it, it, it's like I said about diversity. This is a diverse place. Um, but we have a number of Indian students. Uh, there's a wonderful Indian restaurant here in town. And sometimes, you know, when a, when there's an international restaurant in a different country, it's not very authentic, you know? Like Chinese food in America is not Chinese food in China, okay? I assure you. Um, but all of the Indian students here tell me that the Indian restaurant is amazing and it is authentic. And they it's funny, they have... They have like no spice, hot spice, and Indian spice. Okay, so for some of you can get the real deal there, um, and it's it's it is quite good, and my my wife loves it too. Um, and next door to that is an Indian supermarket, which my wife of course loves because she can get all the spices they have in Nepal, and she can cook you know, biryani and momos and all the things that I eat every day. And she can get all the spices right there, right here in town. And it's great. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a big thing too. But one other thing I will say about that, we have so, we have so many Indian students here. A couple of years ago, they complained to the dining hall that there was not enough vegetarian food. And the university yeah. changed it. They added more vegetarian options because the Indian students requested it. What does that tell you? Remember back when Kasid said personal, uh, personalized? Aha, see, the students found a need and the university 
cater to them. That's not going to happen everywhere you go. Um, and in fact, when I was in Mumbai six weeks ago, I was talking to parents of one of our current students. Uh, our student is named Drew. And the parents said, what can we do to help you? And we talked a lot about what, what the needs and wants that Indian students have. And the first thing they said was more vegetarian okay. options. And I said, I, I listen, I listen. The first thing I did when I got back to campus was I scheduled a meeting between the head of the dining hall and my supervisor. And I said, let's talk about this more. Let's get Indian vegetarian food, not Western vegetarian food. Indian vegetarian food. Let's get some curries in there. Let's get some samosas in there, right? Because that is important, especially for a student who's away from home. Yeah. Because when I lived in China, every couple of months I had to go get a hamburger. I had to. I needed. I needed a Western. I needed a Western meal. I love Chinese food, but sometimes you just need some home comfort food. And it makes all the difference in the world. And we know yeah. that. And we're doing something about it. So do we have Indian students? Yes. Do they have a voice? Yes. And do we hear that voice? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, I think, yeah, I'm, uh, I think that's, we've tried to cover a lot of the questions, Peter. Uh, we're also on time. Uh, yep. So we'll wrap it up with that. Thank you so much. Uh, I do want to, again, I, I know, I said this before. Um, uh, you know, I've, I this is the second time I have I have heard in depth about uh, Sunni Plattsburgh. I wish I was seventeen again and I could uh, I could remake that decision of where I did my undergrad. But um, this is extremely exciting to all the students and parents who joined today. Uh, you know, definitely a great option for you to consider. Uh, right, it's a, a highly prestigious and a really exciting university uh, option for you to consider um, and of course please do talk to your world grad counselor they'll help you i saw a lot of questions about how do i start my first year how will the transfer work etc please do talk to your counselor they'll be able to work you know talk to you through uh, in more detail about you know the courses that you will take how will the transfer over uh, your particular uh, profile etc um, so if we've not been able to answer those, some of those specific questions on your, your profile, please do talk to your counselor and they'll help you through that. Um, but yeah, uh, Peter, thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking our time today. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Uh, I hope for the students and parents, this was helpful. Uh, appreciate everyone joining in on a Friday evening. Peter, anything you'd like to say before we close? Uh, the session? No, I, just thanks for having me. I, 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 I really enjoy the things that, that, uh, you, Pranav, and Kassid have said here today. I agree with all of this, um, and that's important to me. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cooperate with groups that I didn't agree with, right? And that's what makes it easy for me to say the things I'm saying because I agree with this. I, I agree with what I'm doing. I, I, you know, and and that makes my job really easy because yes. I, be, I believe it and it's true. Yes. Um, and what what Pranav said too about. Reaching out to your world grad counselor, absolutely. They are here to walk you through this, as am I. Um, you can get my contact info from the world yep. grad. At, feel free to email me and ask questions anytime. If you if, if you feel like you, you'd you rather speak like this on Zoom or something, I can absolutely meet you on Zoom too. Um, many of you will have questions about professors or students or, or any of that kind of stuff. Please just shoot me an email, let me know. Um, World grad and myself will be with you up until you are here and admitted. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and even even after that, um, come in here, stop into my office and say hi after you're here. Again, networking. Build this relationship and hey, you've got another reference for you, right? Um, and if you feel like coming in and bringing any snacks or gifts, you can always bring them here <laughs> to you as well. I, I appreciate all of that. So. <laughs> Uh, enjoy your Friday evening. Thank you very much for joining us. And Pranav and Kasid, thanks for having me. Um, I look forward to, to interacting again. Absolutely. Thank you, thank Perfect. You so much, Peter. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. 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 No, Great. thanks, Peter. Uh, all right. Yeah. And thanks everyone for joining in. Hope you found this useful. And uh, I'm sure you'll be in touch um, with us through the process. Perfect. All right. Yep. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Uh, we'll draw the session to a close now. Um, yep. Have a good Friday. Um, thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye, Peter.
Bye-bye.